Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King 3. And today I'm going to be giving you part 6 of What If Naruto Phone The Uzumaki Curse. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys. Go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Phone, the Shinigami Weapons, and enjoy that over on Anime King. And also stick around for a brand new episode coming over Anime King 2. If you're new, yes, you heard that correctly. I indeed have three channel guys, Anime King, Anime King 2, and Anime King 3. Which I post What If on every single day, yes. You heard correctly, every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead, click that red subscribe button, and become part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro! So, the last spot we left off. Tasumi woke up in bed with none other than our blonde hero, Naruto Uzumaki. As several circumstances led to this development, circumstances that she did not regret, not one bit, although she was still cautious about the seals that he put up to cancel the sound even though she tested them last night to make sure no one would hear their nightly events. Afterwards, Naruto made his way as he saw there was a nearby river, so he took a dip as he skinny dip. As Sakura and Sasuke came out, they should have expected this by now. This was his behavior, but, well, they shrugged it off. So with that, after he was finished, Naruto met Inari. As Inari thought that Naruto was a normal ninja, but he wasn't a normal ninja. As Naruto was able to speak to the kid and actually inspire him, and told him stop to be a damn coward and fight back. Sanami watched all of this as she saw a new vigor in her son eyes. Hope. Hope that Inira said that was no longer here. Some time passed as Naruto ended up waking up by a hunter nin. The same hunter nin that saved Zabusa. Haku was surprised. She claimed that she was a boy but she was not. As Naruto could simply just tell. As she had said that because of certain situations regarding this place. Not to mention, Gato and, well, his men, there was a lot of them. Not that they could actually do her anything, but it was better if they thought that she was a guy. As Naruto said that he was looking forward for a good fight and he wasn't going to hurt her, she asked him if he had any special person, but he told her no. No, that surprised her. He said that he had no one special. As that sounded like a sad life. But she saw a look in his eyes. She didn't know... How she could properly describe it, but it was just a strange look. Some time passed as Naruto was awoken when you he heard Tsunami screaming. As the group had left off, as Naruto had fallen asleep and he just wouldn't get up. So, with that, Naruto had quickly made his way. He had took care of the bad guys before. He saw Inira trying to save his mother. As Naruto told me, he was proud of him as he made his way towards the bridge. Where he rescued Sasuke as Sasuke collapsed. Knowing that he didn't have to worry anymore that Naruto was here. Haku thought that she could take him out easily but she was completely unaware that he was so fast and so strong as he was actually able to stop her from going into her ice mirrors. And he started to tap into the power of the Yubi as he broke them apart. Showing her the amount of power that he possessed. He defeated her soundly. She did not stand a chance against him. He was much stronger, a lot more stronger than Uchiha. She told him to end her life. There was no point of having a broken tool. It was then that she heard the lightning. As Naruto moved, she moved before him though sinking to Ice Mirror. Naruto appeared as he stretched out. Carnage. It wrapped her in Kakashi's hand dissipating the lightning blade. 
as Naruto extends two blades from out of the carnage and slice into Zabuza, tearing into his heart, ending the man's life. Haku watched with wide eyes. As she started back away, Zabuza Samu was dead. Seeing what she was about to do, Naruto chased after her, but she created ice from the water on the ground as he slipped. But he caught her. He tried to hold on, but she stabbed him in his arms with Senbon needles, hitting his pressure points. As Naruto could not grip on, Kakashi cursed as it was him that got him on the bridge with his hundreds of thugs. Kakashi tried to send a clone underneath the water to help, but the water pressure was just too violent and he couldn't find Naruto's body anywhere. And the other two were still on the bridge. Sasuke was heavily covered with needles and he could not fight. Sakura would be defenseless against these guys. And Tazuna was not win. Gato started to mock the dead as it angered Kakashi. It awakened something inside him that he hasn't shown in a long while. The old Kakashi, the rootless, the cold, heartless one. Kakashi then proceeded to butcher as many men as he could. Most of them throwing themselves off into the ocean, dying. Afraid of even getting close to the demon showing on Wielder. As he killed Gato as well. Ineri and the others came as he heard what happened. Sanami and Ineri were in tears when they heard that Naruto was gone. As he couldn't believe it. Ineri forced himself not to cry. As he had to be strong, Naruto told him that there was always hope. He refused to believe that he was dead. Perhaps he swam away somewhere. But the likely chance of that happening was low. The water down below was deep and violent. And there was a massive whirlpool that was ripping everything apart as that crushed Kakashi clone. The group had returned back to the village, mission complete, but in a solemn tone. Naruto Uzumaki was dead. When Uncle overheard this in the office, she ran out, shock and anger on her face as she just left. Harrison lowered his head as he felt like a complete failure. He failed to reconcile with the boy and now it would never happen because the child was dead as he still couldn't believe it. So yeah guys, that's basically what I thought of you guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself and also guys. Stay in tune for the rest of what is coming your way over in making 2 and yeah. Remember for anyone this first time hear my voice go ahead and click that right subscribe button and become part of the making family. And thank you for all for your help and your support and yeah. Without further ado, what is to begin this new episode? Let's get right into this guys. We begin this episode at the Hidden Leaf. The land of fire. Where the Hidden Leaf village resides. The village was different lately. Yes, it had been a lot different. There was a reason why, but it could all be chopped down to one single name. That name had an addition right now. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Yes, Namikaze. That would have caused a lot of problem before, but now it would not because he was gone. It has been six months. Six months since the death of Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Kurina Yuai was currently on training ground 8 as she watched. Kiba was being knocked down rather viciously. The strikes, the attacks, they were a lot faster and a lot stronger than before. Six months it has been since the news about his death came out. And it had affected a lot of people in the village. Almost everyone had been affected. Mostly the villagers as well, even though that would seem rather odd, but yeah, they were affected as well. But, as for people like Hinata, Kurenai said, stopping Hinata, as Hinata's hand stopped inches away from Kiba's face. Kurenai wasn't sure that she would slow down, or perhaps she would, Kurenai wasn't sure anymore. Hinata turned towards her sensei, her face was blank. The news had hit her rather hard. Really, really hard. Out of almost everyone, except for herself and her teammates, no one truly believed in Hinata. Her clan always found a way to put her down, saying that she was weak. Her teammates weren't there in the beginning. Her teammates weren't there when she was being bullied. They weren't a team yet but Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki had stood up for her and literally sent those guys to the hospital with broken bones. As much as she liked him, he saw her as a little kitten. 
That is what he called her. He saw her as a baby. As he saw her as someone that is too precious for this world. Not really a girlfriend or wife material, but a little sister type if you must see. She had known that for a long while now. So she opted to be friends with him. He was able to give her courage and strength to do things she never thought that she could. As that was able to allow her to not take so much pressure from her clan. Not cry herself to sleep most nights. When her own father told her that she was a failure in his eyes. And if she did not get her act together he would place her in a branch member. And he would disown her as his daughter because she was too weak. His words were cruel. He wanted her to be strong but the way he did it was just awful. But Naruto, he always made her feel strong. He always encouraged her to do her best. But then she heard that he died. She didn't take the news well at all. Hinata was usually silent so most people did not notice the changes. But Kiba had made a comment. Kiba and Naruto never really got along. Although he never wanted Naruto dead. He had made a sly comment, not on purpose, just his mind getting the better of him. Hinata had literally attacked him. If it wasn't for Kurenai, she was sure that Kiba would have got some serious injuries that day. It was because Hinata had holding her anger and that just exploded upon Kiba. Ever since the girl had changed, six months, the changes were visible. For one thing, her attire. Naruto always asked her why did she wear that giant jacket as it did not give her much mobility. If she was wearing something more slimming it would be a lot better. She was too nervous to ever change it but as she looked in the mirror she realized she needed a change. At the moment though she was wearing a white yukata just for the top, the white yukata top as it showed off many more things that were not visible. Certain curves. For a 15 year old girl, she was a lot more developed than the other girls her own age. Especially when compared to people like Ino and Sakura. Well, Ino wasn't that bad, but Sakura, on the other hand. Well, she was getting there one day. Maybe. Kiba was surprised at the change. But he noticed that she was angry at him. Because of that comment, he tried to apologize. She forgave him for that and she told him just to let it go. It wasn't because of his comment that is why she was fighting so hard, it was just the girl had changed. Some might say for the better but she had become rather cold. As Naruto had told her this before that the world was not a nice place, anyone could die at any moment. And taking bullshit from people was not something that he did because what was the point? As her mindset started to change to that. She was wearing slim grey pants underneath as it kind of hugged her body but yet at the same time it was a perfect squeeze as she was wearing flat sandals for good mobility. Her face looked different as well. Maybe it wasn't because she was all shy always. She just looked different. But she was not the only one that changed. As Kurenai, mine was an uncle as well. Her friend had Barely spoken about what happened to Naruto. Kurenai tried to help her, sort out her feelings, but Uncle had shouted more than once that she was fine, although she was drinking a lot lately, as Kurenai knew the reason. Orochimaru had really broke her when he had left and betrayed her like that, despite Uncle not saying it. Her feelings were rather fragile, especially when it comes to where someone leaving. Kurenai had tried her best to be there for her but you could only go so far the person. She walked over to Kiba but his eyes were not on her, instead he looked up to the sky. As Shino notes as well. What the hell? As it was Shino that said that, the usual calm, stoic Shino was shocked. Hinata looked up and she couldn't believe it. What the hell? A few minutes earlier with Team 7. Team 7. Well, the new Team 7. A lot has happened for everyone. Team 7 was no different. Sasuke. Despite not wanting to admit it, Naruto was the closest friend that he got. Yes, they bicker, they argue. They were rivals in Sasuke's case. Always trying to prove that he was better than Naruto, but he didn't hate him. 
and he couldn't believe that he was dead. It made him realize how easy someone life could just end like that. And he was just gone. But it really shook Sokra to her core. Naruto was powerful. So much more powerful than her and yet he died. What did that mean for her? And that changed the girl. It snapped her mindset into something that suppressed Kakashi and Sasuke. It made her realize that she needed to get stronger otherwise. She would be next and she didn't want to die. Sasuke watched the girl as she was currently upside and down in a tree. He used her chakra to stick to said tree. As her eyes were closed, sweat was on her forehead. Usually she went out of her way to make sure that she did not sweat around Sasuke. But he couldn't tell the last time that she asked him out on a date. It was a life changing event. Despite her and Ruth not being that close, he was still her teammate. And he was strong yet he died. That means she could die at any time as well. It made her realize that being a ninja was not a game. She had even cut her hair. At first she was doing this to get Sasuke's attention but maybe it was time that she got serious. It took her teammate dying to, for her to see that but still, it was time. They had got a new member of their team. His name was Sai. Neither of them liked him because in a way he was trying to take through the spot. And not to mention he didn't seem to have a filter. He said bad things, especially when he said something about Naruto Sasuke had almost tried to kill him but Kakashi had intervened. At calming Sasuke down, Kakashi on the other hand pretended like it did not affect him that much but the man was already broken, another piece of him was shattered again. Now everything was lost, even his sensei student. Kakashi, who was reading his book, saw the shadow as he glanced up as Sakura jumped off the tree and landed. It was then that she looked up as long with Sasuke as well. And Sai saw it as well. What the hell? All of them said. Meanwhile at the office a few minutes earlier. Here is in Saratobi. There has been a lot going on in the village. First of all, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, yes. The reason being, Naruto heritage was now public. Hiruzen had made sure to send expert water users towards land of Weave, and they could not find a body. After two months that turned to four, that turned to five they realized that his body was probably washed off somewhere. There was no way that anyone would survive that current. Well there were some special cases but from what? Kakashi had said that girl had used needles to stop Naruto from grabbing what he had thrown towards him to catch him. So perhaps his body had seized up from hitting his points so that would make it a higher chance of him dying. As here's in sigh. The reason why Naruto heritage was public was because a civil war almost broke in the village. The citizens that hated Naruto when they found out that he was dead. Some of them thought that it was a bright idea to destroy his apartment, burn the entire place down to get rid of the demon stain in the village. But the people of the red light district, well, they didn't thought that was good. So they fought. There was a lot of people that died that day as a literal chaos had broken into the village. He had to send his shinobis into incapacitated people and stop them from killing anymore. But yet the people that hated Naruto thought, well they still won because he was dead so they decided to have a celebration every week upon the day that he died which was a Tuesday. So every Tuesday they would celebrate. Hirsten was so disappointed. And he couldn't take it anymore and he snapped as he called the attention of all the people. Perhaps it was because he felt terrible for not being there for Naruto. Perhaps it was because he knew that he wronged Naruto when he was younger. Perhaps it was because he knew that he was a horrible person that did not help Naruto in any way possible. After all Minato and Kushina did for this village and yet the way their son was treated and yet he just, he just broke. So he revealed everything. There was no point in hiding anymore. Younger generations were shocked but they were also surprised why would Naruto be hated for doing something that protect them. He was holding back the Nine Tails 
from destroying the village and yet he was hated. Let's just say that brought a lot of anger in young ones. But the bombshell was when Yurizen told him that he was the son of Minato and Kushina. No, that shocked the older ones. They were shaking to their very core hearing that. As they couldn't believe it, he was the son of their hero. Many of them that treated him like garbage had fell into a state of depression and claimed to love his father and yet they treat his son like absolute garbage. Harrison actually relished in seeing some of them feeling distraught but it didn't last for too long. He felt terrible afterwards. News had spread about Kanoha losing his Jinjulike and that was bad. He had to have a council meeting. Upon people hearing that Kanoha no longer possessed a Jinjulike, nations might thought that it was wise to attack the village now. And they couldn't allow that to happen. But so far everything was going well. But soon enough the tune exams were coming around. And that was going to cause some problems. Hokage-sama, Harrison was snapped from his thoughts as an uncle appeared in the room. Sir, look. Harrison got up. What the hell? He vanished. He reappeared on top of the Hokage's tower. Several ninjas and Anvus back in him. Ninjas from all over started to gather as they glanced up towards the heaven. Is that a bird? No, it doesn't look like a bird. Wait, how far is that thing? They realized the creature was coming down. How was it that large? The creature was coming lower and lower and lower. The thing was massive. The body of the creature was red. It had two massive wings. Its feet had razor sharp claws that looked like it could actually tear into metal. It had a long pointed beak. It was a strange bird, yes it was. It had a long glowing mane that ran from its forehead going straight down to its back. It was a strange bird that none of them had ever seen before. It had fiery red eyes. The bird then let out a screech. That signal all over Kanoha spreading into the land of fire. As everyone was on guard, weapons started to be drawn as everyone prepared themselves for a fight. It was then a massive explosion went up in the sky, but it wasn't a normal explosion. As it wrote something in the ear, it wrote I am back, confusing the people. On top of said bird, a man patted the bird on his head. Thanks for the help, he said. It's quite alright. Call me whenever you like. You can let me off here. Here, you will fall. Oh, it's quite alright, the man said. The bird decided to accept its summoner wishes. The person reached out that there were two other people. He wrapped his arm around the boat of them. As they held on to him rather tightly. The bird then poof away. An enormous gust of wind exploded from said individual. The wind started to rotate around him like a ball. As he hovered in mid-air as he slowly started to descend down towards the ground. He landed right in the heart of Kanoha. Hundreds of ninjas were already at the ready to attack. At this person just invading their village like this. Weapons were drawn. Civilians were being backed away. To get to safety. As Harrison arrived on the field, backed by his envoys, several other teams, Kekashi, Guy was there as well, Asuma, Kurunai, and several others. Who are you? said Harrison. Oh, me? The person said his hood was down as they could not see his face. I am someone here to wreak vengeance. All of the ninjas got prepared at that. I am someone here to bring devastation and destruction. I am someone here to burn. The individual beside him punched him. Don't you think you're going a bit too far? The voice was feminine. But it was not the girl voice that they were worrying about. It was the guys. It sounds so familiar. Yeah, I suppose you're right. They're already on edge. Wouldn't want them to attack and do something stupid. And you would have to retaliate, Naruto-sama. And people might get hurt. So can you stop this charade already? N Naruto? Said Hirzen. He reached up and removed his hood, golden hair fluttering in the wind. That's right. The one and only, he said. 
Ninjas were shocked as they couldn't believe who they were seeing. Wasn't he supposed to be dead? As Kakashi was surprised. Well, if someone could make an entrance, it was only Naruto who can. As the two girls were at his side, they removed their hood. One of them revealing that it was none other than Haku. The other one though, she had beautiful red hair, purple eyes, and she was quite stunning. As the people were confused who they were, the ones that did not know Haku though. As Hiruzen stepped forward, you're, you're alive, he said. Of course I'm alive. You think falling to a lake that might kill a normal man can kill me? Do I look normal, said Naruto, as he looked around all the ninjas. What? You guys look like it's the first time you're seeing someone returning from the dead. Huh, I hope it's not. Well, just know this, people of Kanoha. I am unkillable, and I will never die. Are you now? The girl asks. As Naruto looked towards her. You know you can't be just breaking my indie windows like that, right? Said Naruto. You'll be cramping my style. But sometimes you have to be realistic, she said. But come on. Can I die? Said Naruto. Well, in a sense, it's hard to kill you, but anyone can die. Even if you can't die, they can seal you away. Not when I have you, said Naruto. Alright, girls, he said, placing his armor on their shoulder. Let's go home. N Naruto hears and said, stopping him. We need to talk. Oh, yeah, said Naruto. The whole me being dead thing and all, huh? Yes, Hirsen said. And about your friends? Oh. As Naruto noticed everyone looking at him same way. Did I miss something? What's with the looks? Come with me, Hirsen said. As the three will follow behind Hirsen towards the office. Leaving the dumbstruck crowd there. Hey. What the hell was he riding on? Some of them started question. Never seen a bird like that, and it was also a summon. So that was a rather shocking news. Time skip. Naruto sat in the center of the couch. The two girls on either side, Hiroshima was alone in there with them. As he wanted to talk to Naruto first before anyone else. First of all, would you mind explaining to me how are you alive? And where have you been, he asks. And who are your friends? Oh, that is easy, said Naruto as he sat back. Well, my story started when... Flashback. Are you sure that this... We'll make sure that no one hears us, asked Nami. Yes, said Naruto. I've learned a couple of seals and I'm sure that it will not. And also, we've already tested it. He reached over and pulled her in his arms. It's just, there's a lot of people here. I know, but don't worry. As he started to trail kisses down her neck. Na Naruto, Naruto, in the flashback. What? I... Hiroshin looked at Naruto. I'm asking you what happened when you fell off the bridge. Not if you were with the client, daughter, that you were supposed to protect. Oh yeah, sorry. Got sidetracked it, said Naruto. As he noticed a redhead looking at him with a glare. Alright, back to the topic, said Naruto. Flashback. As Naruto was gurgling on water. As Haku had her eyes closed. Damn it, as he grabbed her and pulled her close. Carnage enveloped Naruto. As it enveloped Haku as well because he was holding on to her. Literally holding her inside. Hey, I can breathe, said Naruto. Of course you can, I told you. My body was made special, said Carnage. Now will you get out of the damn water? Oh yeah. As Naruto was about to swim up when he... What the hell? Hey, what's going on, he said. As he looked down to see the massive whirlpool. What the hell is that? He tried to fight the resistance, but it was just too powerful as he was yanked underneath. The thing sucked him away. There was a space and time ninjutsu seal at the bottom. This was a special seal created by the Uzumakis. As Naruto was teleported a long distance away. Something similar to the Hiroshin, but it was a bit different. As Naruto found himself in a damp, Dark area corn is still surrounding his body. What the hell just happened, he said. As he looked around, confused as hell. As he then released Haku as he transformed back to normal, he caught her before she could fall. Taking off his jacket, he wrapped it around her. Her pulse was steady. 
so he brought her with him as he walked around. Where the hell are we? said Naruto. As his body started to heat up, as he started to channel a bit of the chaos power that was in the system, as he was starting to dry himself, this place, it feels so familiar, said Carnage. What is it? said Naruto. I know where we are. As he was venom in his tone as he spoke, he was angry. Why are you so pissed? It's because we're in the lands of the Wuzumakis. The voice of the Kayubi said. Huh? Lands of the Wuzumakis? Oh, I thought this place was destroyed. It is. But this place seemed to be underneath. Underground. So a secluded area, said Nurik as he glanced around. But where exactly as he looked? He was confused as he didn't know where he was. The place was barely stable, as it was really dark. He calmly walked down the hall, making his way. It didn't take him too long as he arrived. He arrived in front of a massive steel wall. He tried to push it, but there was absolutely nothing. It was a literal strange metal that he's never seen before. It was a normal steel. It wasn't that he noticed something over the side. As he bit his finger and wiped his blood on it, well he was at Uzumaki. It glowed slightly for a moment until it opened up. Hmm, seems I am at Uzumaki. You doubt yourself, asked Kayube. Nah, not really, but well. This is the full proof, he said. Although half, I'm still able to open it. Making his way underneath the ground, Nurti kept on moving until he came across. A strange open area. It was large. Massive. I know this place, said Carnage. You do? Remember, I used to be with the Uzumakis for some time. It's their underground bunker of sorts. Their leader created this place to store away valuable items. I was stored away down here for some time as well, Carnage said with venom. In his tone as he was really angry, as Nurtu could feel it. So what is this place? A place of treasury, said Naruto. A look of glee on his face. Yeah, you can see that. It was then that Naruto saw it. Weapons. Weapons in a strange glass case over the wall. Katanas. Nogashis. Kurigama. Many different weapons, hook staff, bows. They were all crafted with a strange metal. He turned as he saw a pedestal. With a strange knife on it. It was a bit longer than a kunai but it was well crafted. The edge was immensely pointed. As it was chakra metal when he picked it up. He felt it. He channeled some chakra into it. It was then a bright white light went off. Naruto was shocked. As a glow. A glowing white light came out. It was now the length of a fully katana. While the handle was small it was long the blade. Naruto placed it towards the pedestal and brought it down. To his surprise, the thing ran right through it. What the hell is this thing? The damn Uzumakis are well known for their seals. Seals could create things out of this world, said Carnage. After all, they were able to seal a bee like myself away. Well, you not so much, but the Kyube. Yeah, said Naruto. I mean, after all, he's really, really powerful. Are you saying I'm not powerful, you ass? I never said that. Calm down, said Naruto. I know you're angry upon being here, but think about it this way. Me being the last Uzumaki, all of this belongs to me. So I can use this to cause as much carnage as possible. It, think of it as a way of repenting for what the Uzumakis did to you in the past. As carnage thought about it. Hmm. I guess they're right, he said. All right. I'll let you have this, and I won't be so pissed off anymore. As long as you use this to cause chaos. It was in that Naruto saw several massive scrolls. He noticed that one of them was a summoning scroll. Hmm. Something for later, he said. As he saw another scroll as he opened it. There were names. The first name that he read got carnage. Cursed in anger. It was the leader of the Uzumaki clan back then. It was his history and his line going down. As Naruto followed it down. 
As Naruto saw many different branches and he saw Kushina Usumaki, there was nothing under her name. His name would have been there if he was born in this place. But he was not. After all, she was his mother. He glanced around towards the different other strolls as he opened them. What the hell is this, he said. Strange fooling jutsu, said Carnage. Huh. They look complicated as hell, said Naruto as he looked around. At all the other weapons. It was then that he noticed something on the ground. Blood. The blood was stained in the ground like it had been here for a long time. He followed it. Until he came upon a massive door. Using his blood. He was able to open it once again. A little Uzumaki blood could get you a long way in here. Only if you're alive, said Carnage. What do you mean, said Naruto? I saw these seals before. If you were to use a dead Uzumaki, there is something that is released in the blood once you die. And the moment a dead Uzumaki blood touch one of those seals, let's just say there will be some nasty consequences. Well, considering that someone could just take their blood and use it, I guess you're right. As Naruto saw something that he didn't expect to see, it was a girl. It was at that very moment Haku woke up. And she was on his shoulder the entire time. As she started to stir as Naruto put her down. Leaning her up against the wall. She coughed for a bit before she slowly opened her eyes. Where am I? She asks. We're underneath those Maki residence. Naruto, she said. The one and only. She then remember. Tears in her eyes. Why did you save me? Because you were being stupid. Throwing your goddamn life away because Zabuza is dead. She clenched her fists. You... You killed my master. He was the only thing I had to live for. Now I have nothing else. I'm a broken useless tool. And there's no point of being a broken useless tool. As she looked at him. Just leave me here. I will find a way to rid myself from this world. There's no purpose for me staying here anymore. As Naruto slapped her across the face. That stunned her. As she looked up at him. Listen. I'm kind of pissed off that you were throwing your life away. After I just saved you. And seeing that you almost got me killed as well. Stabbing me in the goddamn arm with those hand bonds. What if I was an idiot and couldn't swim? Or better yet. What if I was a regular ninja? And I died said Naruto. I didn't ask for you to save me, I know, but you were being stupid killing yourself. And let's just say I didn't think that it was your time to die. And what makes you believe that you have the say over when people die or when they don't? Because I'm Naruto Uzumaki, and I say what I want and I do what I want. And that gave you the right? Hell yeah it does, said Naruto. And she shook her head. Your argument makes no sense. It doesn't have to make sense, it's mine. She sighed as she dropped her hands to her side. It doesn't matter. There's no point. My master is- Then I'll be your master, said Naruto. If you want one so badly. After all, I did save your life. So you can use me as your life support. After all, I've been looking forward to get a sexy house made. To buy you one of those sexy made outfits. Oh, that would be the dream, said Naruto. Her face did not show any reaction to that. You saved me because you want to use me as your tool, she asks. Well, if that will get you to keep yourself alive, then yes. Think of it that way if you want. But I won't let you die. I went out of my way to save you, said Naruto. So you're mine now, get it? You... Why, she said. You just... Take me like that. You don't even, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna let you die. So enough talk about death and all that. You're alive, deal with it. As Haku was silent for a long time. She couldn't just forget her old master Zabuza like that. But yet here she was with this person that want to be a source of life for her. To take over as her new master. As she didn't see how that she would go on. She then saw him not looking at her as he turned towards the naked woman. 
Who, who is that she said? Her curiosity get the better of her. While she was still depressed about losing her master, she was curious about who was that. I have no idea, said Naruto. There was a woman standing there. Her body was frozen in metal. The same metal of the door over there. She was on some strange pedestal. She looked real, but it could be a statue. But she looked so real. The displacement of her hair, everything else. It was like she was running. As Naruto saw the blood leading up to her arm like someone had hold on to it. He made his way inside. As he saw there was many seals and many holes on the walls. Said holes released something out of them, but he wasn't sure what it was. He saw the seal to activate it. He didn't want to turn to her, so he wasn't going to do that. He tried to lift up the damn thing, but it was so heavy that not even he could budge it. It seems like whatever she was on it solidified her down into the ground. Are you sure that is even a person, Haku said. Perhaps it's simply a statue. I don't think so, said Naruto as he found. The seal on the back of her neck and two on her arms. It seems that he kept her restrained while these holes release some sort of gas or something. As Naruto bit his finger and wiped it on the seals, but nothing happened. He backed away. Huh. I guess Uzumaki blood doesn't work this time. He scratched the back of his head as he didn't know what to do. There. He turned towards Hawk as he saw her pointing on the ground. He noticed it was a seal there, so he backed out. As he placed his hand on it, his blood, but suddenly, the same metal converged in his fingers. What the hell? He tried to pull them out, but they were stuck. As it was then that he felt it. What is happening, Haku asks. This damn thing is draining my chakra. But he didn't release him. As the slot went back into the ground, it was then that he heard a sound. As all the holes start to release a gas. Said gas. Cover the girl. It was then finished. As Haku coughed as she backed away, she wasn't sure what that gas was. It would be safe not to get it down in her system anymore. As Naruto watched, he heard a cracking sound and then it broke. It was like a shell as it broke. He stepped forward as he caught the girl as she collapsed right in his arms. As he picked her up, with the shelling broke she was able to be moved now, but she was still completely naked. She looked to be a year or two older than him. As he glanced around, as Haku noticed there was a chest over to the side, strange clothing. As she opened it, over here she said. With that they got the girl dressed, hiding some of her modesty. As Naruto checked out some of the clothing, they felt heavy, heavier than normal clothing, not to mention you could see the seals designed into it. Uzumaki and their seals, he thought to himself. It didn't take long for her to wake up. The moment her eyes opened, Tenji, no, she said, as she reached out in fear. She then looked around confused. She got to her feet and ran, but Naruto caught her arm. Where are you going, he said. Let me go! As she noticed, she looked around for a weapon. As she saw the blade that Naruto left right there, she picked it up and her chakra flood through it. The blade became large as she swiped to take off his head. As Naruto was incredibly close to her, he could easily block Vu. But Haku moved. As he threw a ice senbon, knocking the blade out of the girl's hand. As the girl gripped her hand as that sliced her a bit, Naruto created a pair of cuffs out of the red and black substance which was carnage and roped her on her hand rather quickly. Let me go, she screamed as she tried to get free. As he wagged his finger in front of her face, calm down, okay? You should be grateful that you're still okay, seeing that you just tried to kill me and all. Who are you? I will not allow you to destroy this village, you bastard, she said. You and your friends, all of you will... She paused and she noticed the headband on his neck. Wait, Kanuha? 
Wait, does that mean Kunu has come to aid us? Naruto looked towards Hawk as both of them were confused. What the hell are you talking about? Uzu, it's being attacked. What the hell, said Carnage. Now that's surprising. Huh, said Naruto. This girl thinks Uzi is being attacked. That could only mean one thing. She's been stuck in here since the village was destroyed. <laughs> it's amazing for her to hear that her village is now gone. Come on, tell her. I love to see the pain on their face after what they did to me. She looked rather young, said Naruto. Do you think that she was a part of the group that sealed away? Well, she was not, but I hate all Uzumakis. So you hate me as well? Of course I do, said Carnage. You're keeping me locked up. But at least you let me watch the fun that is going on. So go on, tell her! I'm not just gonna break the girl like that. Be quiet, said Naruto. As Carnage was cut off from the voice link, but he could still see. Calm down, said Naruto. Uzu is destroyed. Well, he could have said it gently, but it came all that way. What, what are you talking about? She said confused. Your village, Uzu. It's been destroyed. I don't understand. My, vi what? It's, no it can't, it just got attacked, she said. It was just a few moments ago. And Tenji, and Tenji put me down here saying, I, as she started to babble, calm down, said Naruto. The village was attacked a long time ago. During the second shinobi war, the third shinobi war passed, and it was done with some time ago. The name is Naruto Uzumaki. I thought I was the only Uzumaki alive, but I guess you're one as well, he said. As if the Uzumakis have the trait of the flowing red hair. So yeah, she looked like one. No, you're lying, she said. That can't be possible. Look, I'm not lying, said Naruto. I got washed up here. Seems that whirlpool over there brought me here because of my blood. But it's a truth. Ozu was destroyed some time ago. And all the people were slaughtered. She had tears in her eyes. That can't be true, she said. It just can't be. It just happened. Whatever that thing was over there. Tenji and a few others created it. It was to purify. Purify objects for a long time. And he used it on me. He told me I had to survive. Even if no one else did. He, as she looked towards her arm. He sealed away my chakra. Because I refused. How long have I been in there? She asks. A long time now, Haku said. As the girl started crying. As Naruto felt rather awkward. Seeing people cry like this. But Haku came over. As she understood the pain that girl was feeling, so she hugged her. The girl held on to her for dear life. It took a couple of minutes for her to calm down. As she wiped her tears. Looking out of it. Hey, what's your name? said Naruto. Hanoka, she said. And she sniffled. Hanoka Uzumaki, correct? Yes, yeah, she said. As she lowered her head. Wait, you said that you were Uzumaki as well? Who's your parents? You're here. Well, my father was not a Uzumaki. But my mother is Kushina Uzumaki. Wait, what? How can you... Oh, yeah. If I was... Wait, what are you talking about? Said Naruto. I knew Kushina. She was sent to Kanoha for... Being the next tail beast because of her special chakra. Wait, you know my mom? Yeah, well, she was just 8 years old. She was a kid. And she's your mother? Where is she? Can I... Wait. You said that you thought you were the last Uzumaki. Does that mean she's dead? Said Naruto. Oh, I'm sorry. I never got to knew her. Said Naruto. So don't worry. You never knew her? That's a whole other situation I'll tell you about. But for now. What happened? The last thing I remember was being put in that... And the gas burning off my clothing. I guess I was sealed away for that long. What were you sealed into? The purifier, she said. 
It was said to purify objects. It was a way for them to sustain fruits and vegetables. To keep it for a longer period, they were trying to create something inventive for the ninja world, but it didn't work out as they thought. Substance and certain foods did not fit well with the gas. But I guess he fixed it for it to work on the human body. He has been working on it for some years now. As she lowered her head, as she still couldn't believe that, so much has happened. As Nurta glanced around, Do you know how we get out of this place? he asked. She nodded as she led them. She led them towards a staircase that she opened by activating a seal. It was then that Nurta came face to face with his village. As he saw, the place was a mess. There were skeletons here and there. Did no one bother to come here after? The attack happened. It seems like his mother was too broken up to visit this place. But leave the skeletons out here of the people. Hanoka refrained from looking at them as she just walked. The place was filled with moss and grass. The land was almost ruined, some of it breaking apart into the ocean. The houses had collapsed on itself, most of them destroyed and burned. As Nurt looked around, the once proud, esteemed clan of the Uzumakis have been reduced to this by those people, she said. As Hanoka clenched her fists, Haku looked towards the girl she had lost everything to her. It was like waking up from a bad dream. But for them it was a long time but to her it was just a short amount of time. Haku had lost a lot but this was on a different scale. As she glanced towards Naruto, she remembered what he told her that he didn't have any precious people in his life. His eyes looked so disinterested towards everything like it did not bother him even though this was his clan from his last name. Yet he didn't seem to care about it. He has been through a lot just like her to gain this attitude. As Hanoka started to cry as she glanced around at all the destroyed homes, at everything, at all the towers, everyone was just gone. I guess we're all that's left, she said. As she looked towards Naruto, yeah, I guess so, said Naruto. End of flashback. As Harrison sat there, in shock. Well, that was a lot to take in, as he never knew about that place, and he also saw that the woman, Hanoka, she was rather upset hearing him retell the story. So know that I tell you what I've been up to. Well, not all of it, said Harrison, as his mind went towards a giant bird. Yeah, correct, said Naruto, but what's been going on here? Oh, there's something that you must know, Naruto. It's... Regarding your heritage. My heritage? Ah, so you finally wise up and told them, haven't you? Told them? You just heard me told you about the Uzumaki clan, right? I mean, how stupid do you think I am? I know about my mother. And I also know about my father. As hears and pause. He never knew that Naruto was still alive. But this was a... Change that he did not expect. How long have you known, he said. For a very, very long time now, said Naruto. As here's inside. Another reason why the child hate him. There's a lot we have to discuss, he said. Yes, there is, said Naruto. But guys, if you ain't some right here, if you want to see this person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they both said. Remember, share all of your friends in social media platform. But I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.